our brains are a little bit more advanced. So for example, if I miss a word or two, I didn't quite catch what you said. Our brains are fast enough that we can actually, a second or two seconds later, we can actually understand what the person said based on the context, right? Hey guys, today I want to get straight to the point. I want to talk about the things that we realized recently that people make mistakes in their exam and it's costing them a lot of marks and actually they don't realize it. And even us, we didn't realize it for a very long time. So as you guys know already, we've launched our mock test software. Uh, it's been about two weeks. We had tremendous success. Uh, I think we had probably three or four people already that got more than 79 plus after practicing. You guys will see some testimonials as well. Uh, we had lots of people trying the software as well. But anyways, it's not about this. So what we realized basically, we tried to imitate as close as we could the marking system in PTE. And it's still a work in progress, but it's pretty close. It's like 70 to 80% there. And once we started checking the feedback that the software, the AI was giving to the students, we noticed a lot of the mistakes that they're making that they didn't realize they're making. Even as a teacher, I've had probably more than a thousand students uh, over my career. and Obviously, when you spend a lot of time with the students, you can pick up their mistakes. You can kind of tell what it is, but I've never gotten to it in that much detail. So the most common feedback I get after the exam, let's say you're failing listening and writing, which is very common for a lot of people, or especially the listening section. Surprising place, the first one where I want to get started is listening, fill in the blanks. Whenever I ask students how it went, everybody says, oh, it was easy. Or maybe I just messed up one word. Oh, all of them were easy. Now, on the screen, what you can see is uh, five of the practice tests that actually people uh, did through our mock test software. And I just want to take three different students, three random students in um, three different mock tests and to show you their mistakes in listening fill in the blanks. So you see on the screen, it actually gives you the feedback. Right away, you can see what sections they're missing, what sections they need to focus on. So look, this person, and is making very small mistakes she only got two blanks out of five correct. So for example, she got the right word over here, but you see she didn't capitalize the first letter, obviously, and it's an easy mistake to make because in a rush under pressure, you don't realize you're making that mistake. Really and realists, oftentimes they'll say words that are not very clear and main and mate. So I'll just play that last part a bit. I think one of the take home messages from the study is women could probably afford to be more aspirational in their mate pursuit. So you see that word in their mate pursuit, but obviously in the exam, they don't speak that clearly. They don't tell you mate pursuit. So this girl in particular thought it said main pursuit. You need to use some common sense as well. You need to look at the overall context of the, of the audio. And oftentimes the same word will be repeated more than once. So let's go to the next question with the same person. Okay. Here, it's quite common people miss the SSDD. So the word is sequence. She wrote sequence. So in this case, you would have to check grammatically what would be the right word. Because grammatically, to examine the bird's origin, scientists sequence mitochondrial DNA. It doesn't make sense because the whole text, the whole audio was in the past tense. So obviously, whenever you're doing this blank, the verb will usually stay in the past tense as well. And it's very difficult to catch it in the moment, but it's something that takes a little bit of practice. Now on to the next person. If you see in practice as two, this is a different individual. And here we have the lizards move. So the perch took most of the air or the lizards moved. So the perch again, EDs, SS, LYs is something that's very easy for people to miss. So it takes some practice. So in order to help you overcome that, uh, at least to our students in the class, we prepare a list of about 200 to 250 questions or specifically the difficult words with a difficult spelling that come into the exam. So there's a few weird ones like paradoxical, paradoxically, quantitative, qualitative. So some of those words are very difficult, particularly if you're listening to um, an audio that's going full speed, right? So whenever you listen to full speed, it's very easy to miss. It takes some practice. Obviously, if you have those materials, you need to study the words with difficult spelling. Even though you miss something, you can figure it out grammatically. Now, let's look at the final test taker. Here, for example, I am so excited. We're finally bringing it to you. It's finally here, the PT mock test, the best mock test ever. So guys, we spent like literally hundreds of hours. We got programmers who used to work for Nokia and work with Apple. We got, I don't know how many teachers, dozens of teachers and tens of years of experience combined, thousands of students with 79 plus. All this knowledge comes into one place to make a software for you to pass your PT test. 
this. Look forward to all the feedback, all the success you guys will have uh, with using the song sample. How energy played or plays a role. So same thing here, process, processes. So S, E, Ds, L, Ys, that's something you need to be very careful with. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you're missing in the reading section, so you guys know by now, it's not your first time watching our videos probably, if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, and you will know that reading is one of those sections where you do get repeated exam questions. The problem is, whenever as a human being, I'm listening to how you read a text. Because I have the text in front of me, I've heard it before, I can understand what you're saying. The issue is the way you deal with the computer and the way you deal with a human being is different. So as a human being, our brains are a little bit more advanced. So for example, if I miss a word or two, I didn't quite catch what you said. Our brains are fast enough that we can actually, a second or two seconds later, we can actually understand what the person said based on the context, right? So it's almost like if you're learning a new language or you don't speak it 100% fluently, but you can understand like 50, 60% of the words. You can kind of get the idea of what the person is talking about without actually understanding every single word. So same thing is when me and you talk as a human being. The issue is whenever you read it to the computer in the read aloud section, for example, let's just open one question randomly. Okay, you can see this person's accuracy from the text. So what the computer does is obviously it compares the original text, the original transcript to how this person pronounced certain words. So. Let's have a look for a second. Marriage is the biggest step in anyone's life and there is an argument to be... So see, this person said there is an, uh, an argument, right? She mumbled that word, she made a mistake and she kept going. Let's keep listening to this one. ...against getting married too early as any... So the word too wasn't clear enough. ...newlywed, newlywed couple knows that... In this situation, this girl repeated herself twice, so that becomes a problem in read aloud. There is a huge amount of financial pressure associated with marriage. Firstly, the wedding reception and honeymoon will cost you an arm and a leg. Then there's a matter of home loans, rent, and energy bills. So overall, if you're listening to this, it's not bad as a human being, but the problem is if you're the software, if you're the computer, you need to speak more clearly, you need to emphasize the words a little bit more. Let's take another example of the same person. This is what needs to happen on climate change. So you see this girl in particular, the word in or on, the software could not distinguish. So especially in read aloud, whenever you're speaking, you need to make sure you're opening your mouth wide, you're using all of your muscles. Like if you're ever watching the news, you're watching the newscasters on TV, right? They don't say, uh, good morning guys, today we're gonna talk about the weather and uh, you know, in Sydney it's supposed to be 19 degrees. They speak very clearly. They say, good morning ladies and gentlemen, today the weather in Sydney is very beautiful. Right, So they overemphasize it a little bit. Whenever you guys are doing your read aloud, you need to make sure you're getting the maximum number of marks. Particularly because for most non-native English speakers, reading is a little bit tougher. Let's take another test taker's response and read aloud and just see how it went. So again, 56% accuracy, that's a big problem. On the exam, like imagine if you're only getting 50% of your marks for the reading question, that's, that's a big problem. Unless you're a genius already in your reorder paragraphs and you fill in the blanks, this, this, this becomes very problematic. And let's look at the last test taker's um, answers. So you see this particular gentleman, he's from South America. So the way obviously different, um, different people, uh, people with different accents pronounce words is different. So the way he says marriage is not really clear. He's not emphasizing enough on the ending of the word. So at least it's easy for us after we've done this one time to go back and look what are the particular words, what are the particular syllables or sounds where people get stuck on. For example, um, those of you guys that speak Punjabi, right? Um, you might have a difficulty with the Z sound. So you might not say business, you might say business. You might use the, the word G, the letter G instead of Z. Um, a lot of, I notice people from Gujarat, for example, they struggle with the word statistically, quantitative, qualitative, but especially statistically, right? Or obviously people from Nepal, they struggle with S, S, H, right? So they don't say shy, they say sai for example. So it's not a big deal, but at least it's easy for us to tell afterwards that people make these mistakes. So long story short, the big takeaway is the two most important things that I want you to focus on that you were probably not focused on before is your read aloud. That's number one. You need to make sure you're speaking clearly. You're opening your mouth wide. You're using your muscles. You're stretching the, the sound. You're really overemphasizing. 
And the second is listening fill in the blanks. It's one of those questions that sneaks up on you, but you need to think about it this way. Messing up five to six words in spelling and listening fill in the blanks, it's almost like messing up an entire dictation. And unfortunately for those questions, it's harder to find practice materials. Obviously, that's something we provide to our students in the class. But if you don't have access to that, my suggestion would be to quickly check the sentence grammatically when you have the time and really make sure you're trying to catch the S's, the E's, the singulars, the plurals. So guys, that's it for today. Hopefully this was helpful. If you find it very useful um, to get the feedback based on other people's experience, based on their feedback from the mock test, let me know in the comments section right now. We can make more of these videos analyzing specific student mistakes, specific student answers. So hopefully you can recognize some of the mistakes you might be making in your test. So that's it for today. Best of luck on your exam. Whenever you guys pass, please let us know in the comment section. We love to hear your good news. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. I will see you guys soon.